Good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name's Ross, and as always told, out of voice of radio, so today we need to take a good old look at, well, Series 4 prize packs. They're here, they're out, and this is honestly a pretty big deal. Now, I know some of these have started getting to shops over the last week or so, but they're now actually out. They've now actually been confirmed. And we do have the full set list for them, which is always pretty gosh darn important so we can know exactly what is available, what is out there, what we can be looking forward to. And honestly, what we can be looking forward to is something pretty gosh darn cool. Now, as you can see from the image here, there is a new Charizard, and that's where we're going to start. That's where the excitement begins, because we do have a new Charizard, like a genuine, legitimate, brand new Charizard. And look, we all know it's not really a brand new Charizard per se. It is a Charizard from Obsidian Flames, but it's got a new stamp. But actually, that's kind of enough a lot of the time. Like, not wanting to be mean about this or anything, but... What a lot of players need, and I very much count myself in amongst these, to get excited all over again about a new card, is a new stamp. So you got to play Pokemon stamp on the existing Charizard, and for a lot of players, a lot of collectors, that is enough, and that is going to be pretty gosh darn cool. And the thing is, they've done this before. Like, this isn't the first time we've had a play Pokemon stamped Charizard. We've seen this a few times. And it's actually kind of awesome every time. But it does lead to some very expensive cards. You know, take the V-Star, for instance. You know, as I look at eBay right now, if you want to buy the V-Star, you're going to be talking somewhere in the region of, like, $220. That's the, the listing I found on eBay this morning. It's £175 which is about $220. It's not cheap. But then again, and this sounds reductive, but I'm sorry I'm going to say it, it's a Charizard. And they tend to put Charizard into these prize packs. I believe this is a new Charizard every time now. And they always tend to be good and expensive and lovely. But as I've made the point many, many times before, you don't need these. Like, it's Charizard V-Star for play Pokemon stamp on. Just ignore it. Now, the thing that's weirding me out at the moment is that as I record this, and things can obviously change, as I record this, you can pick up the Charizard EX a little bit cheaper. Like, the, the listing I found on eBay was for 200 Canadian dollars, which is for, like, 150 US dollars. Which really doesn't make much sense to me here. Because Charizard V-Star, like, look, I know it's popped up in a couple of lists that we've seen on streams at regionals, and that's lovely. But generally speaking, Charizard V-Star is pretty terrible. Like, not to put too fine a point on it, it's not a good card. It's not seen a huge amount of play. Whereas the thing about Charizard EX, which got so many people so excited, it's, like, legitimately one of the best cards in the game right now. There is an argument that it's the best deck in the format. I don't think it is. I think it's probably in at number two. But there is an argument that it's the best deck in the format. Charizard EX is phenomenal. And yet, it's sitting here cheaper? That makes no sense to me, ladies and gentlemen. So, look, things are very early. These cards have just come out. They're not really supposed to be being sold yet. They are just showing up on eBay. But I do think this is going to end up being more expensive than, say, the V-Star, as an example. But it's not the only cool card that we see, of course. There is a Pidgeot as well, and Pidgeot is the other half of the Charizard deck. Now, I know there are other ways to play this, of course, because you've got the Lost Zone build and all of that. I'm not discounting that. But you look at a good Charizard deck, they generally tend to be played with Pidgeot here. And now we've got a Pidgeot, and the Pidgeot's got a stamp. And there are special illustration rare versions here. There was a special illustration rare version of Pidgeot in Obsidian Flames. There was a special illustration rare version of Charizard in Obsidian Flames. There was a second version of the Charizard, actually drawn by the same artist for what it's worth, that was in Powder and Fates, which has just come out. And yes, this is all a little bit strange, I grant you. But my point is, we've got super fancy versions of these cards. 
So, yeah, there is a strong argument here to go, well, hang on a second. Why do we care when we've got these special illustration rare versions of these same cards? Why are we worried about versions that are the same as the regular versions, but with a stamp? And the answer is, it's up to you. There are going to be plenty of people who look at this and don't care. And there's going to be plenty of people that look at this and do. The thing is, there are an absolute plethora here of extremely playable cards. And that is going to make these prize packs very, very sought after. For those of you that don't know, these are given out at your local store, your local league. Go to your league, play some games, get some packs. Now, how they're actually given out... This does change from store to store. Sometimes they're given out when you play games at league. I've seen them be used as prizes for league challenges and league cups, etc. I'm not sure if there's a specific way they have to be given out. I don't believe there is, but that's where you get them. Here's what it says on the website. Receive Play Pokemon Prize Pack Series 4 at your local game store. Participate in events at your local league to earn these special prize packs featuring popular Pokemon TCG cards. You can make new friends and maybe even rivals while putting your Pokemon trading card game skills to the test at local in-store play Pokemon events. Not only will you be able to take part in fun and exciting competition, but you can also get a special Pokemon TCG prize pack for attending these tournaments. And they'll be available starting on Valentine's Day. Each prize pack contains six cards from a pool of over 100, all of which are legal in the standard format. They include everything from popular Pokemon to exclusive foil upgrades of tournament staples, all featuring the special Play Pokemon logo. And yeah, once again, they have absolutely nailed this. Like absolutely completely nailed this in terms of the set list. The set list here is absolutely brilliant. Chen Pao, very good deck. Seen a bunch of play. Yeah, Chen Pao's in here. And for what it's worth, so is Baxcalibur, who is the partner of Chen Pao. So, I know, look, I know Chen Pao is not the best deck in the format, but it has had some good results. It is absolutely there as a viable deck. And for what it's worth, Japan have just hit rotation. We're going to hit them when EUIC comes around in April. But with the rotation in, yeah, Baxcalibur, Chen Pao is one of the best decks in the game right now. And those two cards are available. How about Gardevoir? I don't think anyone's going to argue against Gardevoir. Gardevoir literally just won Knoxville Regional Championships. Gardevoir is a phenomenal deck that is seeing a huge amount of play and a huge amount of success. I mean, looking at recent tournament results, there is a very strong argument that Giratina V-Star is the best deck in the game right now. It's just, it's been in finals and winning and mirror matches in the finals and just a phenomenal card. Giratina's in here. And they're basically just chalking this full of the best cards in the game. Now, it's not all of the best cards in the game, obviously, but Charizard, Gardevoir, Giratina. These are three of the very, 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 very best decks in the game. Maridon, the card that I always pick as my caster pick at events, as the one that I think is going to go and win. One day it's going to, and I'm going to look like a genius. Yeah, Maridon's in there. And look, it, it's not all of them. Meowth X is in there. No one's arguing that Meowth X is the best deck in the game, all right? No one. But it's still there, and it's still cool that it's there. Regidrago V-Star. Now, look, I got very excited about Regidrago V-Star when it was initially revealed. I thought it was going to be great. It's been a while now. We can all agree that it's not that great. Like, we've had long enough that if it was going to be great, it would be great, Okay. I acknowledge that Registrago V-Star has not turned out to be one of the best decks in the game. But it's still cool and there's still potential. And it's a very cool one. And then, of course, you've got a million just playable staples running around as well. We've got stuff like Super Rod, for instance. We've got stuff like Jet Energy, for instance. We've got stuff like Lost Vacuum. You know, all these cards that just see a huge amount of play everywhere, just popping up in deck after deck after deck. They are all there. They are all doing extremely well. And I adore this. I think this is absolutely fantastic. And as I've said before, these are all just alternate art cards. If you want these, these are cool versions of existing cards that you can get excited about. And if you don't want these... You can just flat out ignore them and pretend they were never even given out in the first place because they are just stamped. Now, some of them are foil, and that means you're going to get the um, 
the fancy foil, the Cosmos foil that you don't get in packs. And that's really awesome. But these are so ignorable. Like, hilariously ignorable. They are a cool thing for collectors who care and who want them. For everybody else, just ignore them. The one thing that's really confusing me is if you look at the promo image they've given us, we've got Charizard and Pidgeot. We've got Reversal Energy, which sees a lot of play. We've got Iono, which is like the best supporter card in the game. Also, there's been like 50 different stamped Iono recently. This is, for, I know there are people out there keeping Iono collection. Yeah, things are getting awkward. And then Kyogre. Why is that Kyogre there? I'm really confused as to why that Kyogre makes it onto this list. It's weird, frankly. It's weird. But I also kind of love it. Right, there we go, ladies and gentlemen. That's what you need to know. And now it's over to you guys. Tell me what you think about these. Tell me how excited you are for these prize packs. Tell me what your pulls you're looking for are. Tell me anything you want to tell me in the comment section. Go nuts. Be nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wasi. That's where we talk about Pokemon and a whole bunch of other card games. And please do consider checking out patreon.com slash ptcgradio, where you can support the channel, get some bonus podcasts, join a Discord, and all kinds of fun things. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching... PTCG Radio.